My name is Ryan New. I'm the Instructional Lead for Social Studies at Jefferson County Public Schools. Today we're going to be looking at the question, how do I prepare for the state assessment? As you know, after what seemed like decades, Kentucky Academic Standards for Social Studies were finally passed and became law in July of 2019. Those standards make up two major sections. Inquiry standards, made up of questioning, using evidence, and communicating conclusion, really the process of learning. And disciplinary standards, civics, economics, geography, and history, of the topic and focus of that learning. Here you see, on the left side, a graph that sort of shows how the two standards work together. That you begin with questioning, you move through the disciplines, investigating each of those disciplines, using evidence from those disciplines in order to communicate conclusions. On the right side, you see a breakdown of the 2021 assessment blueprint, which shows you that 50% of the overall assessment will include the inquiry standards. Additionally, the rest of the 50% is made up of an equal weight between the other disciplines. Oftentimes before, more weight was given to history or to geography, which formed more of the traditional type courses, specifically in middle school. However, now everyone will be responsible, K through 12, of looking at civics, economics, geography, and history equally. Here we see the themes for a K-12 sequence. Now, for Jefferson County, 9, 10, and 11 are different. They were created from a bundling of the standards um, to create those courses. Everyone else across the state, K through eight, have the exact same theme. Here we see that the assessment years will be fifth grade, eighth grade, and 11th grade. Fifth grade will include standards K through five. Eighth grade will include standards six through eight. And one of the biggest shifts is that high school during their 11th grade year will have a test that includes all of the standards in high school. Prior to, it often was just the US history course uh, from the quality core that, that was really the end um, of sequence there. However, now it is all the standards that exist within high school will be tested uh, or available for testing in the 11th grade year. So what we're gonna do now is gonna break down a little bit about what that assessment might look like. Now, we're still waiting on uh, some, of, some of this uh, to come out. Uh, what a practice test might look like, um, whether or not the field test will happen in the fall, uh, which is scheduled for September, um, and what that operational test might look like. This has all been shifted um, and made crazy during the time of COVID. However, once the test does arrive, here are the major elements that we know. The first bullet there talks about how all the standards outlined in the standards will be eligible for assessment. The assessment will be administered 5, 8, and 11, as we said prior to, and you can see here evidence of making sure that 5, 8, and 11 include those standards that have been grade banded to that point, meaning K through 5, 6 through 8, 9 through 11. Additionally, the blueprint, which we've already gone over, talks about how inquiry will be 50% and the disciplinary standards will be 50% represented equally based upon each of those strands. When it comes to breaking down the test components, uh, here are a description of what you might see on the test. There are two major types. There are standalone items, there are cluster sets. Looking first at the standalone, the definition there is that they are self-contained rather than part of a set. Self-contained meaning that they are aligned to either a single disciplinary standard or they are what's known as dual aligned to one disciplinary standard and one inquiry practice. We are one of the only states nationally that are dual aligning standards in this way. Inquiry standards will never be assessed by themselves. You cannot inquire about nothing. And so anytime that there's a inquiry practice, it will be coupled with one of the four disciplinary standards. There are a couple different types on the standalone. 
there are multiple choice or multiple select. Multiple choice for, for answer choices, uh, typically. Um, multiple select, probably more like science, uh, where you have five or six and you have to select uh, two of them. There's also technology enhanced. Uh, while I can't go too much in the details here, typically it involves some type of manipulation within technology so that students will be moving things around on the screen or will have a non-traditional type of uh, question, uh, a map or something like that, where they might have to choose uh, different locations. When it comes to the cluster set, um, and you see here in the definition, sets of independent items with shared stimuli, you should read this as um, sources, right? So sources are going to help make up the cluster sets. This is where the using evidence from the standards comes in. The alignment here, as we've seen before, um, could be like individual standalone items that are aligned much more to the disciplinary standards, but the whole sets may be aligned to one or more standards, right? Um, and so you could be having uh, multiple disciplines inside these cluster sets, including the inquiry standards. There are different types that will appear. Just as above, you'll see the multiple choice and multiple select and the technology enhanced. But the cluster sets also provide an opportunity to really capitalize upon the using evidence standards and the communicated conclusion standards that talk about the short answer and also the extended response, where students will have to uh, use the language of the standards, right? Whether it comes to uh, writing a claim or explaining things, that this is really where these will come into bear which means then that unlike previous years, uh, we really are embodying disciplinary literacy uh, within our field and that we will be responsible for teaching, not just reading and how to inter interpret uh, sources, uh, which would be primary and secondary, but also how to use those to construct claims and explanations. Here we see a breakdown of the different types of um, items that you'll see on the assessment and how many points they'll be worth. So you can see here the multiple choice is one point, multiple select is two points, technology enhanced can be one or two, uh, short answer two points, and open response four points. Here is probably one of the most important breakdowns of the assessment when it comes to the depth of knowledge. You'll notice here that one of the big fears is that the test will be so rooted in the minutia of facts and dates which is, by the way, the number one criticism, not just from students, but also the public, about what it is that we offer. We don't offer just facts and dates. We don't need to do that in the information age where we can quickly look these things up. We need to be able to figure out how to process a new vocabulary, a new way of understanding what the students are trying to get at. And we see that in the recall and reproduction. Notice here that in the second bullet, it says that it's limited to a demonstration of social studies skills rather than a recall of social studies facts. What that means is that the language of the standard is what is going to be assessed. If the language of the standard uh, uses certain phrases like uh, corroboration or uh, interdependence or comparative advantage or uh, democratic principles, then that is the language that students will see. Um, that basically here, what we're seeing is that it is going to be the language of the standard that matters most. Because of the emphasis on inquiry, we then recommend that the essential standards that make up, if your school requires this, is to make the essential standards your standards. Um, the questioning using evidence and communicate conclusion slides here are paramount for understanding how to operationalize that inquiry process that will align specifically to those cluster sets. Schools that look at just using disciplinary standards as their essential standards are going to be woefully unpreparing students to do well on an assessment that uses the language of the standards in their choices. Additionally, if you do not take the essential standards as the inquiry standards, then the curriculum frameworks that we've developed will become essentially meaningless because there will be uh, utterly zero cohesion to those standards if you're ripping out all the standards not chosen for your essential standards. Suffice to say, using the inquiry as your essential standards are what we recommend. 
In order to help make better sense of this, uh, we at Jefferson County have tried to do our best to break down not only a document that talks about why the essential standards are needed, but also uh, when it comes to the glossary um, that we've constructed using KDE, C3, um, our own DEP, uh, and other tools, right, to get at the full range of what it is that we might be discussing in social studies, but that we've gone through and broken down every single one of the standards language per grade or per strand in the high school um, and to be able to show you what those look like. This is uh, an example from seventh grade looking specifically at an economic standard. Notice here that there's a clarification statement, which is from KDE, um, and that we've underlined those words that we are breaking down for our teachers. Now, we may get, we may get this wrong. That's okay. Uh, just email us and we will fix uh, what's there. But what we want to sort of do with this document is A, help that process of deconstruction easier for teachers, and B, try to bring some coherence. You'll notice here that looking at something like interdependence um, is broken down here based upon the KD definition, but you'll see that we've also associated with a, a series of terms that might also be helpful for teachers whenever they're constructing units and lessons. So when talking about interdependence, you might want to talk about comparative advantage or economic globalization, reusing and redoubling these terms so that students become much more familiar with them will really help them on the assessment. Note here that in building up towards uh, that assessment that we are maintaining throughout the system uh, exactly what the standards out, uh, design. We have questioning, moving into those different disciplines, using evidence, and ultimately the two major goals of social studies, creating argument and taking action. This video has been about how do I prepare for the state assessment? Thank you very much.